And the question at the moment is why are Chinese companies appearing suddenly to be interested in, in Australian companies, particularly the mining companies? Um, really, China has begun to get a lot more integrated into the, the world economy um, in the last 30 years as it's, as it's moved away from being a very closed and insular economy. Um, but that, that integration with the rest of the world has occurred largely through trade. So China's trade linkage is now very strong with Europe, with the United States, with Australia, with other parts of Asia and, and the rest of the world. Uh, and indeed, China is now our largest uh, trading partner, uh, although Japan is still our largest export partner. But China's sort of linkages with the rest of the world have not, uh, at this stage, moved to beyond trade to investment and other forms of, of, uh, of linkages with the rest of the world as far as the economy goes. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The main reason is China has, has restricted uh, a lot of investment uh, into and out of China uh, until very recently. Uh, until the past few years or so, or a couple of years or so, China has not allowed investments into China except in the form of foreign direct investment, which basically means uh, foreign companies buying stakes in Chinese companies, uh, buying factories and things like that. Uh, so the investments into China have been very restricted, meaning that uh, it's been very difficult for foreign mutual funds and so on to buy into, uh, into China without, without taking a stake or a joint venture in a, in a Chinese company. Uh, similarly, Ch the Chinese government has restricted funding going out of China. So there's been almost no money coming out of China uh, from Chinese corporations, from the Chinese government or from Chinese citizens uh, to buy foreign companies. Um, but in uh, the past few years, some of these, these regulations have started to be relaxed. China's uh, government has wanted to encourage different forms of, of investment, both into China and outside China. So now foreigners have some access to, to some of uh, China's share market and other, other markets in China, if only at this stage in a fairly uh, limited uh, way. But I think that access will get uh, um, greater as time goes by. Uh, on the other side, uh, China has wanted to increase its investment exposure overseas. So uh, a couple, this, is, this is going to come through at several different channels. Um, some Chinese companies will want to take um, positions in, in foreign companies, either in their industry or in other industries. Uh, an example of that is um, the ICBC, one of the large Chinese banks taking a stake in, in South African Bank. There's been stakes taken by Chinese banks in, uh, in foreign banks. There's also been um, potential stakes taken by Chinese government entities in, in foreign entities. Uh, and increasingly, uh, Chinese citizens will be allowed to buy through various sort of mutual fund um, uh, possibilities stakes in foreign companies. So there's a lot more ability for Chinese um, corporate citizens and so on to buy, to buy stakes overseas. Now, the, as far as the Chinese government is concerned, they are... Uh, particularly encouraging investments in banking and in resources. And, of course, that's where Australia comes into the play. Um, the feeling in China is that they need resources. They need resources to fund what is a, a, a multi-year, probably multi-decade long uh, infrastructure program to develop their economy. Um, their own economy, their own country can't develop enough resources to keep up with demand. So they need to have secure demand, and that's their fundamental uh, their fundamental challenge is to, to have secure demand. Price, of course, is an issue, but they're really as concerned about security of demand as they are about the price of the resources that they want to buy. So the Chinese government is, is encouraging Chinese companies or, through uh, the Chinese government, acquisition of foreign resource companies. Uh, as far as the, the, the government activity here goes, there's several government agencies that are very active in this space. Uh, China, because it allowed money to come in to buy foreign direct investments for many years, but didn't allow money to go out, as well as the fact that China had big trade surpluses, meant that China built up nearly, well, roughly today, $2 trillion of foreign exchange reserves. Uh, $200 billion of that has been channeled to the China Investment Corporation, effectively their sovereign wealth fund. Uh, so that's $200 billion that's been put aside or earmarked particularly for overseas investments or some of that for overseas investments. Um, but there's other organisations, government organisations, pension funds and so on, that are also very interested in acquiring assets overseas. Um, so there's a lot of money there. There's the, there's the ability to purchase foreign assets. There's also, I think, a lot, of, uh, a lot more long-term thinking in China than there is in many other places. And the fact that the, the economy globally is in, in, in a bad way, prices are low, 
is seen by the Chinese possibly as, as, a, as an opportunity to acquire assets at, at a reasonable price. Uh, and they'll take the long-term view rather than the short-term view that the markets often take. So China has the, now the willingness, the ability, and I think also in the current environment, um, it's seen as very desirable for them to acquire foreign assets. So where will this go in the future? I think there'll be more and more really integration of China in investment markets. China is still a very small player in, in global investment flows, flows of, of money to buy shares, um, uh, stakes in companies and so on. But they'll, they'll get a weight, they'll, they'll increase investments inward and outward that's more appropriate to the size of their economy and the size of their population. So as far as Australia is concerned, I think we have to get used to this. There's going to be a lot more plays both into and out of uh, China, and, uh, and Australian companies need, need to be aware that, that, that that's going to happen. Is it a threat? Um, there, are, there are reasons to be, I guess, wary. Uh, the, the Chinese government does have a stake in some of these companies, so I think really the government here needs to be thinking about what are the, what are the objectives of the Chinese government with this particular acquisition. Are there, are there defence issues? Are there, what are the national interest issues? Um, in some cases, I think these are purely commercial plays and they're very, they're, they're, there's very little for the government to be concerned about. Uh, in some cases, I think that may not be the case. But just because there's a government behind a, an acquisition rather than a, pri a commercial uh, player, I don't think necessarily complicates matters or makes matters more um, or, or less in the national interest, if you like.